and this is a tutorial on uh, ways to prepare and set up for a live show using Ableton Live, assuming that you have some backing tracks, um, might be singing or playing along. Um, so here we go. So first off, how to just get your tracks into the set. So I have a new set here. I just have prepared some audio tracks or I have four audio tracks. I always have a separate folder on my hard drive for live show stems. Okay, so here I keep all the stems for my live shows. So I'm not going to show uh, the actual bouncing of the stems, but basically what I do um, and what's recommended is exporting the elements of your tracks into a couple different groups. Um, so especially if you're running a lot of your stuff through an interface that gives the sound technician a lot less control at whatever venue you're performing at. Um, so, uh, or maybe there is no sound technician, maybe it's just you performing somewhere. So you want to have control over the different elements um, to some extent. So basically you can see here I have um, separated out my bass, uh, my drums, the musical elements or harmonic elements, and the percussion. So I do mine a little bit differently. You could, um, one kind of common way of doing it is bass, um, music, kind of which is your chords, your backup vocals, and your percussion would be included in this all together. And then your kick separately and your snare separately. So I play often with a drummer, so I do it a little bit differently. I usually export the kick and snare together in case I'm performing without him and the percussion separately so that we can um, mess around with it with more detail in case he wants to play more or less. So depending on your needs, you might want to um, just do something more specific to your set. But generally speaking, bass, music, kick, and snare. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this in. So this is my bass line. I'm just going to drag and drop the clips. So I'm highlighting this. Just going to pull it over. You can see it's loading here. Then I'm going to do the music. Come on. <laughs> then my percussion. And I actually know my kick and snare is in this other folder where I've exported slightly different ones, but here it is. All right. Now, another thing you'll notice, you could have seen it in the folder too, but I named them very specifically, the files, right? and they come into Ableton named the same as whatever they were in your folder. So when I'm exporting, basically I open my live set um, of the song Crazy, let's say. I'll solo all the bass elements, or I can mute everything else, depending on what's easier. So I'll solo the bass elements. In this case, there's probably like one or two bass tracks. So I'll solo the bass elements, I'll export the bass elements by themselves, then when I name it, I name it like this specifically, so I have all the info. So this is bass, crazy is the name of the song, and then the BPM, because you can see when I brought it in, it is not warped. So I have to do the warping. So it's important that you know the BPM, you don't want to have to open up your old set, blah, blah, blah. So. You can see I've named them all that way. Music, crazy, M just stands for mastered, 136. All right, so let's warp it now. So I know it's 136, so I'm gonna go up to my global tempo here in the upper left corner. I'm gonna type in 136, just gonna play, make sure we're there. Okay, gonna highlight the bass, warp music, warp, and so on. Just gonna warp all of these. All right, so now everything's warped to the grid. When I played, the reason you didn't hear anything is because I've omitted the pad that opens the track because I wanted to play that. So keep in mind when you're bouncing your um, different stems for your live performance that you want to mute, obviously, whatever you're going to be playing or take out the vocals if you're going to be singing everything. So um, just mute whatever you don't want in there. In this case, the song opens just with a pad sound, so there's nothing at the beginning. Okay, so 
Now, just to keep things organized, I'm going to rename all my tracks. So this is going to be where I put in the first, oops, the um, all of my bass stems. This is going to be all my music stems. This is going to be for my sets because I play with the drummer like I explained. This is going to be all the percussion. And this is going to be my kick snare for when I don't play with my drummer. We've got everything in. Another nice thing that we can do is color code all of the tracks you have in your live set. So obviously right now it's really easy to tell this is my track because I only have one song. But in your live set you may have like 15 songs eventually. And with all the things being different colors it could be really confusing. So I'm going to click here on the bass uh, clip. I'm just going to hit shift and click here on the last one. And then I'm going to hit control click or you could do right click if you have a mouse. And um, you can see all the colors that are available. So I'm going to make this one red. And then over here on the right hand side, here I'm over here on the master track. I'm going to do the same thing, control click or right click. I'm going to make it red. Now, a nice trick that you can do in Ableton, <clears throat> because often during live sets, you'll launch your tracks here from the master or the scene launch. Right? So the horizontal lines, right? these are called tracks vertical. Horizontally in um, session view, which is this, this view here, right? This is arrangement view. This is session view. So horizontally, they're called scenes, which makes sense, right? It describes really what we're doing here. So when I hit this button here, this little triangle here, this is the scene launch button. So it's going to play all these tracks that are here um, all at once. And so I'll just let it roll for a sec. You can see that there's nothing here because I'm playing the opening, but starting to get some audio here. All right, there we go. Okay, so a nice thing that you can do is have each scene launch correctly at the right BPM by naming it a certain way. So I'm going to right click or control click here, rename, and I'm going to type the name of the song, which is crazy, which is good to do anyway to keep your tracks organized. And then I'm going to type 136 BPM. Okay, now just for examples sake, I'm going to change the global tempo up here to 100. And then now see when I click the scene launch button, it has now automatically changed. Oops, kind of got cut off there to 136. Okay, so that's a nice thing we can do. All right, so let's bring in another track just so that we have two, at least two songs going here. So I'm going to load my song waiting. Got my bass. Oh. Got my kick snare, got my music, and my percussion. Okay, so now you can see how it's really helpful to do the color coding. So I'm just going to make these some kind of contrasting color. We'll go blue. I'm going to rename this waiting, and then, oh no, what's my BPM? Oh, thank goodness. I wrote it right here. It's 120. So I'm going to say waiting 120 BPM. I'm going to launch the scene. You can see that it changed to 120. And then I'm going to warp everything. Another nice thing to do so that I don't have to do this every time is I can save this um, I can save the warping. So down here in the sample section, there's this save button. So I'm gonna hit save. So now in another, if I'm building another live set and I bring in this same clip, I won't have to warp it. It'll already be done. It'll remember. So that's a little nice trick there. Oh, got to make this blue too. Okay. So now, again, if I hit crazy, it's going to launch the track at 136. If I hit the launch button for waiting, it's going to launch at 120. So automatically done for me. Don't have to worry about changing the BPM during a live show.